we're going to, to look now at the, um, the, the way to escape the, this, this snare. And as I indicated in the last hour, um, certainly the, the, the good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ um, and uh, his death on the cross, his dealing with our sin on the cross and the power of his resurrection um, has uh, power and authority in plenty to bring freedom from, from this problem. And um, uh, this is so the whole basis of our ministry in helping people, whether it be people coming out of uh, homosexuality, whether people um, coming out of, of uh, um, promiscuity and, um, or uh, be recovering from sexual abuse, Jesus has power to get to the, to the depth of the heart. Basically, in uh, addressing these issues, where there is a profound addiction, a profound sexual addiction that we were talking before. Um, we need to be um, really bringing the, the, the healing grace and the, the restoring grace of, of Jesus Christ, the grace of salvation, uh, and need to, to really work through various parts of the whole being, initially the spirit, in terms of um, uh, how the spirit has been veiled by the, the darkness of, of, of the, the internet. And you see, again, what, what um, pornography and lust and, uh, and, and fantasy um, uh, does is it, it attacks directly that, uh, our spirit, that part of us that communicates and responds to God. Joel, the prophet Joel said, and then Peter, of course, quoted in, at, at Pentecost that in those days, um, you know, the Holy Spirit will be released and young men will see, dream, will, will see visions and old men will dream dreams or vice versa. I can never remember what the order is. But, but it, it, it's speaking that, that God has got a language that speaks directly to our spirit. Um, and that language, you know, when we are born again, we... we are able to see the kingdom of God and that's not with our physical eyes as much as the eyes of our heart, the eyes of our spirit. We are, we are um, awakened to the reality of the kingdom of God that is beyond the real. Um, well, fantasy, um, pornography, the images that come from pornography, uh, the, the, the dreams and all of that, that directly impacts the spirit, as it were, because we are, you know, like just lust and undressing people is actually seeing through into a different reality. And so it's, the, the spirit is veiled. So we need, first and foremost, to pray healing for the human spirit. If the person hasn't been converted, to actually bring the spirit to life. By, by sharing the gospel and, and bringing the spirit to life. If the person has been converted but the spirit has been veiled by images of darkness, then we need to be uh, praying for, 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 for cleansing and freedom of the spirit. We need to be praying for the mind. We need to be praying that, that the, the neural pathways that have been established um, in the mind, in fact, uh, but I, I, how I, we, we do it in the courses I run is using the imagery of placing a detour sign at the old um, neural pathway to create a new pathway uh, through the brain, which I like to call the highway of holiness. Because it is like, you know, in the brain there's this old freeway that has been um, uh, tracked and uh, reinforced and reinforced every time, every time. You know, like sort of the, the, the adage, the self-talk that you know, people are looking at or coming out of the stuff can say, oh, one more time won't hurt. Yes, one more time will hurt because you'll further reinforce, not only reinforce, but create something 
new, a new branch of that pathway in your brain, yes, one more time will hurt. So we teach people how to place a detour sign of the old neural pathway, as it were, and to create a new one, one that in fact is learning that, that yes, I am hungry, and yes, I am thirsty for relationship, for intimacy, to, to meet the deepest needs of my soul, but it is in coming to Jesus, if you drink of the water that I shall give you, you shall never thirst again. If you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will have uh, life uh, within you. And so it's learning how, in fact, to find those things, those needs that that we are seeking through um, through broken sexuality, that search for intimacy that will inevitably uh, fail or be short-changed, will be inevitably end in false intimacy, to be learning how we can come into the truest intimacy in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And because we are wired for God, as St. Francis, Francis of Assisi said that, um, Man, uh, God made man and woman for himself and uh, we cannot find rest until we find peace in him. And that's so true. So we, we, we pray into the, uh, into the neural pathways, binding the old, uh, placing blocks on the senses that uh, um, are just hungry, that have been trained to be looking for opportunities. Just, yeah. So pray into the mind, we pray into the heart, which I see is different from the spirit, the heart being the seat of emotions. And there where, where you know, that's the pain that I had on the board, the pain of abandonment perhaps, the pain of rejection, the, the pain of failure, the pain of shame. And you know, Jesus is the one who heals the broken heart, and so we, we, we pray for healing for the heart. We pray for healing for the identity, um, just the, the very self-concept, because inevitably the person who is surfing the net and, and looking for uh, to be able to connect with others, uh, coming from a low sense of self and the need, somehow in this connection I'm going to feel better about myself. Uh, so we, we need to, 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 to pray into the identity and really help people come to understand that we indeed are children of the living God and, and you know, in Him is our, is our victory and our all-sufficiency. Pray into the will, the, uh, the empowering of the will, um, either the will that is weak, I can't, I can't, I'm the big one. Um, you know, this addiction made me do it kind of thing, to be praying a, a strengthening in, in, into the will, but really aligning the will with the will of God. Thy will be done in me as it is in heaven. Let the Holy Spirit bring, just, just you know, fill my will with your will, O oh God. Or where the will is just a stubborn, rebellious will, not so much the victim, I can't help it, but just the, 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 the stubborn rebellion to be uh, breaking that and binding that and bre breaking that. And again, it's praying for the empowering of the, the will. And then uh, and, and another vital aspect of praying is for the body itself, the physical healing. Because as I said, just the... the, uh, the, the um, Chemicals and uh, um, that, that are released into into the body through this addiction, it is uh, it's a, a chemical addiction. The, the the one thing that's different is that instead of the chemicals being external and needing to go and score them at uh, um, whichever station or when we cross or wherever, we actually carry the source in our own body. And so, from that point of view, it's perhaps a more difficult addiction to break. Um, but to be praying physical healing, just as the Lord releases healing to the body, to 
be primed for a phys physical healing and, and, and a, uh, a, a new equilibrium, a chem chemical equilibrium, according to, to God's original plan for our being, rather than the way that it's been hijacked through um, learning to, to uh, use different um, uh, or release different chemicals just to have a sense of life and zest and whatever. So, uh, first of all, um, the handout that I've given there is some steps to freedom from internet compulsion. Um, first of all, some hard decisions are required to, to forsake denial, to actually say, yes, I do have a problem and this problem needs to be addressed, um, to, to come out of secrecy. Um, solitariness, secrecy and shame drive internet pornography, uh, compulsion, internet com compulsion. And, and so uh, we'll, never, we'll never overcome this problem alone. Right? Um, I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons why I'm standing here um, teaching this and doing this is because I've had to recover myself from sexual addiction. It's been a, a, a huge problem through a long time in my life. Um, and for so many years, I tried to fight it alone. And the shame was, was just so, so great that uh, I, I you know, just, you know, just kept it to myself and was in secrecy about it. And it wasn't until I received grace from God to be able to confess to uh, another pastor my problem and then became uh, accountable um, with him uh, that the problem, I, I you know, it took some, some time, but um, was, was broken and, and I'm free from it. But I'm talking about a, a problem going right back to my childhood um, and that pervaded my being for 40 years. Um, well, 35, which you know, is a, you know, a, a pretty deep, deep, deeply ingrained and deep set. Uh, and through the victory of Jesus Christ, through the victory of the gospel, I, I know freedom, and that's why it is that I'm involved in this ministry now. It's not that I've done years and years in some you know, university to study this stuff. I've studied it all right, um, but uh, in a hands-on way, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so we, we need to forsake secrecy and actually enter into accountability. Um, to keep uh, a daily inventory of um, computer use, be uh, accurate in actually recording the time lost and uh, uh, yeah, to develop maybe an abbreviation system that, that um, uh, reflects just what has been watched and how long it's been watched, but then to, to where you've, you know, where the, the, the culprit or the person has has fallen again to make sure that they bring that to the light, to bring it to somebody else, to to share it. Because it's God gives grace to the humble. Right? He resists the proud. And, and and secrecy, and I can do this by myself, and nobody else need know this is my thing that I don't want anybody else to know. That's just full of pride. And and that's not going to get us anywhere. It's in the humility of being known. <coughs> Scripture, if we walk in the light, 1 John 1, 1.5, if we walk in the light as uh, he is in the light, as Jesus Christ is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So bringing to the light the darkness or the shame that's, uh, that's in the heart. Um, Monitor your motivations when you log on. Check your mood. Am I legitimately using the computer or am I secretly looking for some comfort? To, to become really honest about what's happening. And the other thing is to, in the intimate relationship that we have with God, saying, Holy Spirit, prompt me. Prompt me. Right at the very beginning of, of, of the cycle, when I'm first triggered or even before I'm triggered, 
you know, that, 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 that I'm actually secretly <coughs> scanning, you know, it's so that we actually come to know ourselves and, and check our motivation and what I used to do, I don't have to do this anymore, uh, I do go up my eyes, I can assure you, I still walk in accountability this day and I always will for the rest of my life. We'll, we'll, we'll continue to, to live in accountability because I don't want to withdraw into shame and, and you know, give the devil any foothold. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, to uh, recognise, wow, I, I'm triggered here, I've got a plan. Now, I, I'm already trawling, thinking, now when can I go onto the internet and check it out? I've got to ring my accountability partner. I've got to ring somebody and say, hey, I'm already planning. I want to make myself accountable to you. Because if we don't do that, then actually what we're doing is just keeping our options open. And in keeping our options open, inevitably we will fall because we're keeping our options open to fall, if you see what I mean. Um, make a list of all the actual and possible consequences of, of your internet pornography addiction. The consequences might be time. How much time have I lost? Money. How much money have I spent downloading stuff? Um, integrity. How much of my integrity has actually been undermined? How much am I actually living as a false person? If you really knew what I did, you wouldn't like me. You would reject me. So I keep this, pers this persona out there. I had this persona for, for years as a, as a Christian. The, the, uh, the Christian you know, that seemed to be in control of everything, but only I knew the dark secret. Integrity is lost. So, you know, to what degree is, uh, has my integrity been lost? How is this having an effect on my relationships? See, if a man's into internet pornography, the wife may not know specifically, but her giftedness, how it is that God has wired our sisters, is with that intuitive sense. Because, see, women are more relationally sensitive than men. And so they may not know the, the details, but somehow they know the lights are, in, are on, but nobody's at home. And, 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 and so the addiction might be secret, but the wife's going to be feeling, they're not connecting with me. Like we're even having sex, but it feels almost as though I'm just, you know, I'm being used for you to you know, have your orgasm. Like it. there's just this this sense that you know, so, so you know, that, that can be another uh, cost and, and, and consequence to this. The, the uh, danger of the footprint that's left on the computer and what it is that children may come along and accidentally discover or uh, 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 unload and so often viruses are allowed into the computer through this stuff um, and uh, uh, like it's, it's hidden in the, the memory and the, the whole uh, mechanism that's the word of computer of the computer. So make a list of the possible, of the actual and possible consequences. And, and you know, it's interesting, those consequences in terms of maybe our integrity, integrity, uh, time, um, uh, our money, um, yeah, these things are symbolic of actually the way that we worship God. We worship God by, by giving him our tithes and offerings. We worship God by making, his, making our, our time, you know, providing our time to him. We, we worship God in terms of being a whole person and a person of integrity. Um, 
you know, these are the very things that actually we are re-diverting and so there's an idolatry. Um, instead of worshipping the living God, there's actually an idolatry that is overtaking us. And, uh, echoes of, well, both, and particularly the Old Testament, but also the New. Um, make sure that, uh, like, you know, that we have accountability, as I said, uh, profound addiction will need counselling and uh, the, the need to join a recovery group. Um, I run lots of recovery groups at, at, at uh, Ramsgate and there are other recovery groups around the place such as uh, Sexaholics Anonymous and so forth, one that meets at Gaimea Baptist, I think. Um, so a radical change in accessing and using the computer as necessary. We need to forsake our sole control of the computer by giving another person permission to regularly check its internet history. We need to download filters on the back of um, this uh, other one that I've given you, uh, which is um, uh, Child Proof Your Computer. Um, I'm not going to have time tonight to get through this, but all the details there about how to, to child proof your computer. On the back there, there's uh, um, various uh, um, filter systems that are available that you can purchase to put onto your computer. Uh, and maybe um, you don't have children, but you have a problem with, with internet pornography yourself, then put the family friendly filter, filter on for your sake, but, but, forsake the right to be the administrator. You know, you need to give the, uh, the pass, you need to allow somebody else. I, I set the, uh, the um, well, I've got the, the password to so many different people's computers who bring their computer to me, or I go to their place or whatever in order to, uh, to log in with a particular password that I use so they can you know, either set the filters or change the filters adjust the filters or whatever, uh, but they don't have access to, to the um, administration of their computer. They need to forsake access to the administration of their computer so that they can't get in and, and turn off the, the filter or, or change. That's a very important aspect of, of um, uh, changing the uh, use of the computer. Um, move the computer to a central place where there is frequent traffic. So rather than having it uh, locked away in a bedroom or in a study somewhere, to, uh, to have the computer, uh, we've got ours at home, um, right at the central hallway that filled, uh, every room basically feeds into to, to where the computer is. So there's not a, you know, normally when people are in the house, uh, you know, there's not a really sort of a, an isolated place to be able to use the computer. Um, <clears throat> establish the, the habit of using the computer for a limited time um, or only at a certain time each day when triggers are, are, are less um, frequent. Uh, filtered internet uh, service providers remove much of the stress um, of what can be downloaded. We can even use a calendar on the computer to log on time uh, online at activity and the, the amount of time that's on time. There, there is also other um, programs like Covenant Eyes um, and uh, I just forgotten the name of the other one that I was thinking. Um, but Covenant Eyes, you can download Covenant Eyes and what that does is uh, send a um, a history of your computer use to a, an accountability partner. <coughs> so um, if you have covenant eyes on your computer, um, that person, you, know, you, you, you nominate somebody who obviously agrees that they will monitor your internet use and uh, covenant eyes will send a, uh, a detailed report of that person's uh, computer use for the week and will make recommendations. Basically covenant eyes will say a review is necessary for this person, um, and you know these sites have been rated that are, um, are you know teen appropriate. These sites are, uh, are been rated that are only adult appropriate, 
Um, and you know, so once I see that, then I just check what I, I don't look at the sites, but uh, just look at the names of uh, what the sites are and bring the person and say, um, got your report this, uh, this week and there were these uh, sites. Yes, um, uh, but that kind of accountability can, um, can help. Um, there are also uh, uh, applications you can download for your um, uh, phone um, so that you can't access porn on the phone as well. If it remains a problem, get rid of the computer altogether. I think we need sometimes for even 12 months or whatever. Uh, I guess we've got the benefit, uh, whereas Jesus said, you know, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Um, well, you know, if your computer constantly causes you to sin, get rid of it. Uh, the, the good news is that once you've broken the habit, you can get the computer back. Um, if you've gouged out your eye or cut off your hand, it's a bit late. So we, we, we're ahead. We're ahead from that point of view. But there are those steps uh, to freedom from uh, uh, um, internet compulsion. Now, on the other one there, um, some guides, family guide, friendly tips to, to guide uh, use of the internet. This is in terms of, of children. Um, first of all, be involved. There's no substitute for parental involvement. Um, ask your kids to uh, uh, show me your favourite sites. Who are your online friends? And um, uh, just to really sort of have a discussion and talk with them so that you're aware of, of, of their um, uh, use of the, in, of, of the internet and talk with them about the fact that pornography is a real problem. And pornography is, you know, like, a, you know, where people with no clothes on appear and like my daughter says, oh, Dad, that's disgusting. I go, I know, but it's real. And, you know, you've just got to... To, to watch that, but you know, it's, it may be that because you know, one of the things that they do, um, the, the pornographers, they buy up um, sites. For example, um, yeah, I won't give it, but one is a misspelling of Disney, um, and, and so if the child types in and this, that particular misspelling of Disney, guess what they're going to get? Pornography. Uh, I uh, had a friend and they were doing some, um, uh, yeah, this, uh, history stuff. I, again, not going to, to name the, uh, the, the place, but they had to look up this particular significant um, historic uh, building. And they typed that in that particular, not even the spelling, they typed in the proper name of it, but the pornographers had beat the, the particular nation where this, you know, uh, to, to the rights of that thing, and so up came, it was a brothel. And it was ad ad adverse you know, to a brothel. And so here's a kid doing his homework. You know, legitimately types in a, a, the name of the site, and in fact what they get is a brothel. Um, so, the, the poem was a very, very, very clever in the way that they will seek to hook and draw people in, draw the kids in, in terms of their curiosity, and then that cycle can begin. So we need to talk with them and just explain to them the dangers. It's not about it's it's it's, 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 it's not a good thing to say. Oh well, I won't mention it to them. Because, you know, what they don't know won't hurt them. It's better that they don't know this stuff is out there than I tell them that it, you know, that it is out there because inevitably they're going to find that it's out there. Inevitably. They're going to download something that is quite innocent and that is going to have an attachment to something else. My, my son did it. He was, um, when he was 13, was uh, doing some research into King... King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And he was, you know, doing that. 
and then there was another box that, that he selected and he went straight there and it was a homosexual site. Quite explicit. And you know, he came running. So, I mean, it's not going to be a matter of if, it's going to be a matter of when. So what we need to do is say, you know what, this is going to happen, and if it ever happens, come and tell Daddy or come and tell Mummy quickly. Like, you're not going to be in trouble. We just want to be able to get it off the com computer. And, and, and so that, you know, sort of, to be able to create a safe place for the children to come and say, this is what it is that I've just seen. Like, help me. And it might be, you know, a good thing to sit down and pray with the children. And just to pray that the image that they had seen, Jesus, we ask that you cleanse. We thank you for the power of your blood that cleanses. And not that Jimmy has sinned, but other people have sinned against him. And so we ask that you cleanse the effect of this sin against Jimmy from what these wicked people have set him up to see. Cleanse his mind. Cleanse his heart and any trauma, because that was what my son was, you know, he was traumatised by what he saw and he had right to be traumatised <laughs> by what he saw. So to, to just be able to pray and, 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 and cleansing, as I said, just to, to you know, give them that, not, not set them up to go looking for it, but to recognise, you know what, it may come and, and, and if it does, Come and tell mummy and daddy really quickly because we need to pray for you and we need to, to you know, just clean that from the computer completely. And if you know, they are able to, to do that, uh, and there's that kind of trust, then they will um, be able to use the computer far more um, safely. Um, make technology your friend. Take advantage of built-in resources like AOL parental controls um, that uh, allow you to determine the level of access you want your child to have. Um, many computers have that built-in. Now, if you go to the, um, I don't know what section it is, to the, sorry? To the control, yeah, the control panel, and it's somewhere in the control panel there you'll find access and separate, yes. Um, blocking soft software, uh, there's a whole heap of, of, of uh, blocking software, as I said, so I've lifted on this child proof your computer. This one is particularly for a PC. Um, if you want one as to how to do it for a Mac, I, it's much longer than this. Um, if you email me, I can send it to you. Um, <clears throat> okay, reviewing uh, the rules. Um, think how many times you, re you remind your children to look both ways before crossing the street. Now, how many times do you need to tell them not to give out personal uh, information to strangers online? In fact, it's, it's really good to sit down with your kids and to work out a consultative set of guidelines for the computer. This, like you know, to say, well, you know, there are nasty people out there who are doing all kinds of things and, and, and on Facebook or in, in, you know, I don't know why they go into chat rooms, but they may. Like, you know, there are nasty people out there who want to, want to try and, and, and um, you know, disturb you. Just like they're bullying. Just like it... At, at, in the school playground, you may see bullies. Well, there's adult bullies out there who want to bully you on the internet and can can really cause you know you to to get upset. So how about we make some rules about what it is that we will you know do and not do when we go on on on, on the, the net and 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 so that. The children help develop. Like, what are some ideas? You know, like, what about stranger, stranger danger? How might we incorporate stranger danger? Oh, I know, I know. 
sort of don't don't talk with anybody that you don't know on the computer. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's have a rule that we do not interact or talk with anybody that we don't know who they are. No new person that we will you know, talk in. And sometimes they want to find out where it is that you live. They might want to contact you. What, what do you think we should do? Um, well, we won't tell them where we live. No, don't tell them where we live. <coughs> what else might we? What, what else won't we tell them about us, about our home? Um, we won't tell them our phone number. No, don't tell them our phone number. What else might we not tell them? You know, like about even our computer. Oh, we won't tell them our email address. No, we won't tell them our email address. We won't. You know, and so we get these lists of things that we won't tell them because it's stranger danger on the computer and, and to, to work with them in establishing a set of guidelines and that is probably a good thing to summarize those somehow and just have them posted you might even have them posted on the home on the home page on the the, the desktop of, of of the computer so that every time they log on you know there is the reminder of the the guidelines that you've established um, never you know, pay money. I sometimes my children now want to download um, you know, and pay for something on, on, online. Uh, Ruth and I always do that. We don't give them access to be able to do that at all. Um, so uh, anyway, there's some, some other ideas there that are. Um, I've mentioned tip four, making the agreement with the child. Um, tip five, use time management. There are online timers that limit the amount of time your children can spend online. <coughs> so for instance, if you set the time range between three to nine p.m., or well, for younger children much less than that, your child will not be able to sign in before three p.m. or after nine. And so this allows a parent the flexibility to tailor their child's uh, time online. Um, yeah, don't overreact. React if, if you know if children come with something. Don't go. Oh, you know, like sort of just say, okay, this is, and we'll pray and 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 you know, this is those really nasty people. But you know, just be be calm about it all. Um, Move the computer, keep it in a high traffic area so that the kids, you know, if you, you know, all eyes know that somebody, when they're using a computer, anybody can walk through it any moment. So that, um, they're not having unwise sites come up. Make sure that your um, child's school ha has an acceptable use policy for internet um, use. That's mostly the case in these days. Um, and if your friend, and if you, if you, if your child goes to a friend's home and you know they use the computer there, just check with their parents. You know, do you have a internet use policy? Like, do your kids uh, are there boundaries? Because we you know, just want to be careful that our children aren't exposed to um, uh, pornography or to sites that are destructive to their developing mental, <coughs> emotional. Spiritual well-being. Um, so that's pretty well. Just uh, an overall way of um, a first of all dealing with problems with the internet for um, uh, adults and proofing the internet for children. The uh, book over there, busting the internet snare, is uh, the one that. Um, is, is useful, a, a, a six-week program to help adults to break, um, yeah, a, a habit, internet habit. But normally it needs to, as I said, needs to be used in conjunction with, with other people. But it's certainly something that can be done initially alone. And it itself says you've got to find somebody to be accountable to. So that immediately takes them beyond themselves. Any questions? Just on the uh, 
family filters, those, those, those filters stop, as they stop, if you type, mistype this word Disney, to stop the, that site coming up or to stop you downloading stuff off that site? Uh, now the family filters um, uh, will be set to scan anything that's going to be pornographic. Right. So the, 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 the um, uh, um, address that you may type in may not indicate that it's particularly pornographic, but most family filters uh, you know, will check what the, um, the, the content right. of the, the thing is, and so if there's any nudity or anything like that, it will prevent the, the thing from being downloaded. Okay. So it's not just so much uh, <coughs> the address as the actual content in the, in, in the site, pretty largely. So would a filter prevent, like for instance when you said Disney and, you, and a child's misspelled that, would a filter stop that? A filter would stop it from the point of view that the filter becomes aware of the content. Okay. So though the, the name, the, 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 the web address, oh sorry, yeah the web address may appear to be innocent, um, the filter is able to, I don't know how it works, yeah. but to, to test what content is inside there. So, yeah, like it'll pick up words like, you know, it can actually become frustrating. It's frustrating for, for, for me because I'm all, all the time writing, typing the word SEX, mainly because of the kind of work that I do, like, or if not typing it, um, wanting to download information, you know, but the family filter won't let it come down because that word is frequently used through the article or whatever and it just blocks it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Two comments rather than questions, Rob. Um, first is the majority of computers that are now being bought are lap laptops and in an awful lot of techie households now there's a wireless network and you can use the laptop anywhere, anywhere. and that is a reality yes. in, in, most, in most techie households these days. The other thing is your, your strategy about rules, having taught high school kids in a technology high school, um, all of the kids knew all the bad things that could happen. In fact, they knew people that it had happened to but teenagers are natural risk takers and it's never going to happen to me and they'll do it anyway. Yes. Um, and um, I think your strategy with a Christian family with Christian kids will work but most teenagers probably are, even in a Christian family, are going to challenge those kind of rules. Yes. So we've got to be still aware. And, and that's the, 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 the mm. comment was the fact that particularly teenagers uh, will ignore or mm. challenge the, uh, the rules that may be set up. Uh, and, and that is true, I mean, just the, the whole rebellious and, and the, mm. the, that, that sense of, of, of the teenage fi teenager finding him or herself uh, self, basically self-determining. It's a time of self-determining and so I will make my own rules. Thank you. So it's at that point that we need, I suppose, you know, to, to have been training earlier on to be uh, making them aware of the dangers and, as I said, empowering them with that capacity to help make the, the, uh, the, uh, the rules or the, the guidelines. Um, and, uh, yeah, but, and just keeping a, um, an eye on, on what's happening, check, I mean, I check my son's internet history on his laptop recently just to sort of check and also the downloads, to see what had been downloaded and so forth and everything was clean. Did you do that? Sorry? Did you use cabinet reports, did you? No, 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 I just, uh, we use Macs and so it's very easy to check all the downloads sort of, well, I just Type, Unless he clears his type. history. <coughs> Unless he clears his history, um, in, in, mm. particularly in Max, that's easier to do. Yeah. Um, but but even if you clear the history, uh, you don't clear what's been downloaded. Mm. That's true. So 
you can go check the downloads, and though the internet history has been has been cleared, and to all intents and purposes, the, you know, the screen and what's on the screen seems to be clean. In the downloads, there's 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 a the history. It's it's there. So um, uh, unless he knows how to go in and clean that, of course. Um, so. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, to, to, to be, uh, I suppose applying the same principles, recognising, okay, there's going to be a different dynamic at work with the teenagers here. We need to continue to empower them. We need not to shame them and to create a, a safe place, you know, sort of, and to be able to say, look, you know, you're a bit older now and you do have this extra power because you're older and you're a lot brighter and able to, to do things like, you know, you're not going to get in trouble here, so let, can we just have a, at least an open relationship about this because it can be dangerous. We've probably got to also acknowledge the strength of the sexual drive of the teenager. Indeed, the, the strength of the sexual drive of the teenager, that whole curiosity thing is, is really what what uh, links in there and, and all the talk and so forth and and I mean the, the teenagers will be sharing about what well, I saw you know, at mm. school mm. this side and that side and so the kids are actually told so it, there needs to be you know, again that sort of rapport that's built up and that 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 trust that's that's there and if um, you know you discover something approach it rationally, lovingly, and, and wisely, rather than reactively. Because a reactively is only going to drive it worse. So there needs to be building the trust. And hey, hey, you, look at this. What do you reckon about this, Mike? What do you reckon, mate? Do you think that this is... You tell me what you think about it. Rather than me telling him what I think about it, you know, if you're sort of empowering in that way, that probably will come from, well, it's not real good. You know, why do you, oh, well, somebody told me at school. Well, you know, anyway, sort of just to be talking it through in that way, yeah. Ron, the people that um, attend your, your courses um, dealing with a, a pornography addiction, are there many who are addicted to child pornography? Um, that you know about? I won't necessarily know that because part of it, so the question is, people who attend my courses, are there many who are addicted <coughs> to child pornography? There have been some and by law I've got to report it. I can't, somebody can't come and tell that to me and me not report it and they know that. So um, some I mean, I can suspect that, um, but the fact that they're coming for help is a good, good sign. And if I suspect it, and uh, I mean, yeah, and they are working through, but but most, I mean, I, I think most aren't. I mean, some will admit to, like, you know, I know I've seen underage stuff, but I haven't downloaded it, like, you know, that sort of thing. So they'll say, I came across it accidentally or, or whatever, but um, yeah, there's been a couple that I've needed to alert the police to, and they've appreciated that. They've had to face court and, and so forth, and I've been with them when that's happened. Um, and there's, a, like, there's a, a sense of, well, I'm facing the consequences here, and that's actually, like, if a person's heart is right, they'll say, that's a good thing. I need to face the consequences. Mm -hmm of this because that's going to help me get over it. Ron, what about all the computers that the high school children were given by the government? Have they got a filter on them? Yes. So yes. A very effective filter. Very yes. effective? They were, they were set with effective filters, yes. Oh. I worked for three different food companies and part of the process of working for those was to sign up to a computer policy. And these companies had big computer systems with up to two and three dozen filters. 
but the fact we had a policy which you signed to and said if you upload or download pornographic material or insert it through a memory stick, you lose your job. Mm. These people still lost their jobs. Yes. The infection gets detected by the, the gurus on the help desks mm. and you know, and it's ruthless. And it's that, that out, only out, out, out. Yes, exactly. And, and that, that only lost. that only uh, supports my assertion that sec that, that, that addiction, pornography mm. addiction addiction mm. is a huge problem. The fact that people will risk losing their jobs. Yeah. You know, because they know there's a policy and they deliberately flout that policy and they have seen people go before. But again, it's the it, like it's the adrenaline thing, there's this this sense of you know, like um, the excitement of doing something, you know, even against the company, like, you know, or doing something you know, that I want to do and, and I won't get caught, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of outsmart, but the adrenaline is pumping, not just by <coughs> terms of what they're seeing, but in terms of the fact that they know that they are doing something which is highly risky mm. and, and that is what is behind this thing. The risk factor behind pornography is huge. Mm. And that's what actually drives the addiction. But the, the loss was even greater because the food industry, there's no secrets. And a person goes to get a job in the food industry right. on a company mm. and they ring up for a reference. Reputation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they're gone. Lost. And we're talking about senior managers, directors, yes. middle managers and junior managers, not people mm. working in the shop. Uh, all the, right, right down the, yeah. the whole pecking order of the yeah. company, people have been caught. Yeah. And, and, and because this again, respects no people. Mm. And I mean, we, 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 we look and, and, and see television presenters, mm. Mm. Uh, high court judges, um, uh, people in the, um, the uh, what office was that? Uh, um, Anyway, like you know, at, at government level, level, high government <coughs> level, right down through, we will find people who have you know, succumbed to, to this addiction, and that's only the tip of the iceberg. The ones who aren't caught, you know, a lot larger. Mm. Interesting to get your thoughts very briefly. Um, I work in the IT industry, uh, and if I, I mean, I'm, I'm one exception, but if I ever wanted to get around a filter... Um, oh, you filter, could. Yes, yeah, that's exactly. right. Um, kids today are, you know, way ahead of most parents, yes. um, as I was when I was a kid, and I'm sure my kids will be ahead of me regardless of what industry I work in, um, just in terms of the, the updated <coughs> trends of what's going on. Um, Google Chrome, for instance, Firefox now have um, private browsing modes, where you can browse yes. without a history. So you can browse anonymously on the web, no matter what you do. Um, and again, and what, what, what's just been said here is that, that Google Chrome and Firefox and so forth have private browsing modes, you know, so that you can not be, be traced in terms of what you're, what you're watching. And so again, this is the industry empower. I mean, you don't need private browsing modes no. unless you're looking at pornography and so forth. So again, it's the industry empowering the industry. You see how it is the big end of town that is invested in this thing. So, I, well, firstly, I'd like to state that I think it's absolutely imperative that you have that relationship with your children because I'm guessing that within 10 to 15 years, it's going to be even harder. I mean, these filters, some of them, I haven't looked at all of them, but I know some of them have struggled over the last 10 years to keep up. Um, because of the way that, that yes, technology is advancing. Um, and I know that Big Pond and Telstra have just uh, you know, started filtering all their stuff on the mobiles. Yes. But uh, so without that's, that... So that's... Uh, the, the Big Pond and Telstra have started f filtering their stuff on the mobiles. So if you're getting mobiles for your kids, link out with Telstra because that's, they're going to be the safest one mm -hmm. in terms of, of mobiles for kids here. Um, so what would you say is uh, your view of, of where this will end up in the next 10 years. <laughs> I am frightened to say. Yeah. I, because, as I said from in, in, in the first hour, in terms of just the <coughs> creep of, 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 of what you know was at one stage pornography and then normalised pornography and then normalised, and the porn industry all the time pushing the boundaries, and we're now at you know, high-level violence. Uh, we also, what I forgot to say, 
in the first hours that pornography makers um, are making porn for women, like you know, women, which has got much more of a storyline to it and so forth. So women are being drawn in that way. Um, uh, just where it's going to go and take you'd think, you'd hope that we are, in terms of the violence and uh, quite frankly in terms of the bestiality um, and, and, and so which is where porn has landed at present, um, the, 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 uh, the group stuff and you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is as sick, as sick as you can imagine. Um, well, no, it's sicker than you can imagine. Um, and I, I don't know. In fact, I, I'm, 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 my, what my prayer is, Lord, is getting so bad that, uh, first of all, I, I think there'll be a community reaction, not just Christians, but I think that the community will start to wake up and say, just a minute, this is getting out of hand. But I, I, perhaps more so, Lord, send a revival amongst us, you know, because it is getting so dark, our only hope is your light. You know, and so I think you know, to be praying, God, pour out your spirit in a fresh new way because we're getting so dark. Okay, I think that about does it. And thank you for your attention. Yes. Well, just on behalf of everybody here, um, I really did appreciate that. Got a lot out of it. It was very practical, very worthwhile. So, um, yeah, very uh, relevant subject to the world that we live in today and a very useful to us. So, we want to say a very big thank you to you. Thank you very much. Um,